Hi everyone and happy Saturday. Today I thought I'd do something a little different. I realized I didn't have a flip through Friday yesterday. I got distracted trying to organize my art corner, art studio, but it's really more like a corner of a room. Uh, it'll probably expand for sure, then it'll probably become a studio. But anyway, I got so busy doing that, I got sidetracked, and by the time I figured it out, it was late at night, and I was tired, and you, and there's no sense in doing grumpy videos because I'm tired. So, I thought I'd pick this up today. Instead of a standard flip through where I show you guys the printed version of the book that I'm talking about, I am going to do a digital flip through today. So this is actually, you're, you're seeing my computer screen right now and then we'll flip over to the webcam later, like we normally do. So for this flip through, I'm going to feature a Jade Summer book. Now, if you've been subscribed for a while or you went back and watched my Jade Summer book review, then you know I'm a huge Jade Summer fan. And uh, there's a huge variety of books that they put out. They offer digital versions for free with their printed copies, which is a really good deal, even if they're at their high price, uh, high price, even if they're at a price of seven to eight dollars, it's still a really good deal in my opinion. Now they do use CreateSpace paper and it is, apparently there's different versions of CreateSpace and theirs is the, I guess the cheapest one, the lowest quality. So I can work around that using like Crayolas and stuff. They are single sided pages, but I know a lot of people don't like that. So in in that case, they do provide digital versions. Their newest release is called Animal Mandalas, and it was just released yesterday. This is a book I'm going to end up reviewing today because when they have their new releases on Fridays, throughout the weekend they have a sale price, a new release price of $3.99 on Amazon. And after Sunday, it goes up to the regular price, which is usually between seven and eight dollars, depending on if it's on sale or not. So this is a really good deal for this weekend, and I thought if somebody's interested in it, this would be a good time to feature it if you want a paper copy. And I believe the digital copy is marked down as well. So one thing I will note about this is this was an advanced review copy. Now, I'm going to do this every time, I'm going to say this little disclaimer every time I probably review a Jade Summer book or if this happens in any other case. I had signed up to receive their newsletter through their site, jadesummer.com, and then I was also selected to put my name in to receive advanced review copies of books. And what happens is they'll send them usually on Thursday with a release on Friday. They ask you to look over it, provide feedback on it. The final copy may not entirely match the advanced review copy, but there at most will probably be minor changes unless they change like the artwork on the cover page or something. They are going to be very similar. Now the advanced review copy is free. When I sign up for that, I don't necessarily get an advanced review copy of every single book that's coming out, which they put out a lot of books, maybe not weekly, but pretty close to, which is great. I mean, that gives everybody a good variety to uh, choose from. So I'm glad that they really stay on the ball with that kind of stuff. And uh, with the advanced review copy, they do ask for feedback. They do ask that you review it and help support them, but it is not required. This is actually the first one that I'm doing and I should have done it on Thursday or yesterday, but I got sidetracked and it didn't really I didn't get inspired to try this until last night and then of course I had to find desktop software and I lucked up on that let me tell you. <laughs> anyway, so this was a free copy. This was an advanced review copy. I did not purchase this version but I will say that this is going to be an honest review. I don't necessarily review every book that comes out. I'd like to start doing it more often because I really like their books. But this will be an honest review, regardless of it being a free copy. If I don't like something, I'm going to talk about it. Because I do believe they really listen to people that provide feedback and stuff. And I want to be one of those people that can hopefully help 
uh, provide some support and feedback for this kind of stuff. So it's called Mandala Coloring Book, Animal Mandalas, underneath. If you go look for it on Amazon, well, if you, it's on the Jade Summer site on the very front page. You click on that, it describes it. You get a free page to download, which in, in style of Jade Summer, that's usually the title page. If you keep scrolling, you actually get examples of the art in the book, which is really nice. I, that is one thing I'm going to tell them, please keep doing this. A lot of illustrators don't provide examples, you know, for obvious reasons. They don't want somebody to steal the image and print it out and not purchase the book. But in this case, if you put a watermark or something like this on it, it, I would rather they do this it, because, you know, a lot of times with the cover page and the few pages you may see that people completed, if they even post those, it's hard to get an idea of the line art in a book. And I love the fact that Jade Summer's doing this. This is, they may have done this for all their books, but this is the first time I've noticed this one. So if you click on this, this takes you to the actual page for it. You're going to have a hard time searching for it just flat out. You probably need to put in this whole name. It's in, a, it's in an odd bucket, and that is something that I have issue with for Amazon in particular with them. And so I'm going to ask them to, they do have a coloring book category under books. I think that would be more appropriate than this. So I'm going to ask, you know, I'm gonna provide some feedback on that. And I'm also gonna ask them to see, I don't know if they can use different buckets or just one to put them in. I don't know how it works in terms of search terms, but if they could update the search terms to something a little bit shorter included then it would be easier to find this you can it's easy to find it if you copy this whole long title but you can find it if you hit jade summer and like newest arrivals or something but it is it's a little difficult to find so that is an issue that i have so anyway we'll go ahead and roll through this now one thing i'll say at the beginning when i was first reviewing these i assumed or when I first started buying Jade Summer books, I was under the impression Jade Summer was a person. And as far as I know, after looking into it, uh, it's actually a brand or an imprint that's owned by Fritz and Publishing. So you'll see this page at the beginning of their books. They did add Jade Summer brand coloring pages are created by a team of independent artists. I'm not sure when that was added in because I was looking through them. I assume that was a new edition, but I'm still seeing it in other books, but I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Anyway, regardless, I appreciate that they put this in there because a lot of times when you get books that are published by a group and they don't give specific artist names, a lot of times you're left wondering how they got that line art. And in some ways that makes me feel uncomfortable sometimes with those books. Because, you know, I don't, I don't know how they got the line art. I don't know anything about it. And I always want to be supportive of artists and illustrators. So the fact that they do put this in to let you know is, is very nice. I like that they do that a lot. They do provide some little thumbnails, thumbnail type images, little sample images at the beginning to show what's in the book. These work great as test pages. Jay Summer does not provide blank pages as test pages for different media, so I'm going to suggest that to them as well. But this, these are actually would work really well for them. So that kind of gives you an idea there. So now we're going to dig into the book. All printed Jay Summer books, as far as I know, are one-sided. I've never seen a double-sided one. So they're all uh, one-sided, and they do have a black frame around the page, which... Uh, is really neat and the back of the page is also uh, colored black now because they're one-sided you can use wet media on the actual printed version I'd highly recommend you treat it with gesso first not only to keep the page from buckling as much but to give you a little more time to blend things like watercolors and so on but if you're using markers or anything you can use them without having to worry about damaging the image on the other side but I, as always I'd recommend using a protect protective sheet or something behind the page you're working on in the printed version to avoid doing anything to the picture underneath it. So 
So usually the first one is their title or is the, what the copy. Boy, I'm having some trouble today with these words. Um, it's typically what's on the cover page and or the cover of the book. And again, this is typically what you can get as a free download. So then you have peacocks as well. Manivores, I think. I've went through this a couple times already, and really I should have Googled this to make sure. But I I want to do this one, probably, it might be my next one in this book, but I, I want to color it with a black background and use some technique to make these kind of glow. Because that, they would look a lot like the ones that I see in the uh, different aquariums a lot, and I can't think of what they're specifically called, but I think that would be really neat. And the owl... I, this page right here is my, my subconscious, uh, it's like its favorite page ever because I've said before, I'm not a fan of owls, but yet somehow I keep collecting stuff and being drawn towards stuff that has owls in it, first off. And secondly, uh, same thing with mandalas. At the beginning, I didn't really like them, um, but here lately, I've really been drawn to them. The beauty of this book with the mandalas is you have <clears throat> a wide variety of uh, mandalas. You have some that are a little more detailed and complex like this. You have some that are probably middle of the ground. Sorry. Uh, you have some that are probably middle of the ground in terms of detail work. Like this one's probably in the middle. <clears throat> Goodness. Hang on. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I don't know what's happening to my voice all of a sudden. <clears throat> it's getting scratchy. And then, like, this one's probably middle of the ground, too. You have your unicorn. And this one's a little more simple. So you have pretty much three categories of mandalas in this book. You have the detailed, the kind of detailed, and then super simple ones. So I think my problem with mandalas has always been that the books I got at the beginning were very detailed and I am not a fan of that much detail work in mandalas. If I want a mandala, want to color a mandala, then I want it to be something simple I can do in a few sessions or whatever. So this one's a good example of a simple one because you have a lot of empty background space here. I was going to say up here I really like these uh, the little foxes. They do a variety of textures as well. They do some texture line art on the animals. And then some of them, they just... This one has a little bit, but a lot of them, they just leave open space. <clears throat> for you to either just color in or add some of your own art if you want. Now, as far as the simple ones, I, some of these, I feel like, are just a little too simple. Like, in this case, I feel like there could have been just a little more line art around it to balance it out. It feels a little empty here. And on a lot of the single animal ones uh, where there's not two or more, it I get this feeling. So not a huge issue, but it is something that I'm, I necessarily don't really like about this book in particular. I do like the rabbits one. I have a friend who's a big fan of rabbits. She would probably like this one. Again, you get a little bit of texture, and then you can add your own in if you like. Of course, we have kitties. Can't have an animal book in my house without a cat, right? <laughs> uh, this one would be really good uh, with, like, that classic Egyptian cat look where, you know, maybe a black cat and then color this these little bands in gold and different things. That would be really pretty. One of the things I do love about this book is when I first started looking through it, I didn't like it. And then every time I've scrolled through it since then, I get, I it's really been growing on me. And now as I look at these pages, I get inspired just by looking at them. And that is, that is unusual for me for the most part, especially when it happens multiple times. So that's a really good plus for this book and the actual art that they use. Your little chipmunks. See, again, this one's better. There's a little more detail to this one. There's not as much white space. So this one's actually pretty nicely balanced. 
Your snakes. Not a big fan of snakes, but I really like this one. Maybe do a nice little blend of different colors on the snakes. I'm normally not... I usually rebel against coloring images the way nature intended, but I, I've i been a little more okay with that recently. But in that case, I want to use some different colors. You have your fox here. And again, that one's a little more simplistic, but it is balanced out pretty well. There's not as much white space. Your otters. I don't see a lot of otters in coloring books, and I do love me some otters. At least on the surface, they are pretty screwed up in terms of reproduction and, and whatnot. <laughs> Go Google that. I'm not going into detail on that one. This is one of the ones I feel like they could have done a little more with. This feels like the goldfish in this background feels more like an afterthought. I feel like there could have been a little more detail here. There's a lot of white space. Now you could fill in your own. That's one of the benefits to this. But if you're not one that tends to feel comfortable doing that, then this can leave a little, this can leave a little to be desired. That is not my, that's probably one of my least favorite uh, pictures in this book. Your hummingbirds. This is really pretty. A good variety of animals. You have a ram. All the, a lot of unusual choices that you wouldn't normally see in coloring books. Most of them, unless they're themed books, generally tend to lean more towards the cute, cuddly, fuzzy animals. And this one does a great job of featuring all of them. From fish to cats and dogs to birds to rams and cattle and things like that. So they do a really nice variety of animals and that is a again a really big pro for this book. This is also a great place to practice some gem work which I haven't done much of. This is another one I wish I feel like there's something missing here. It's a little too simple. Your kitties again. I like the texture, the line art they've done with them. This one would be gorgeous with a gold and then like colors from the savannah in the background. That would that would be really gorgeous. There's that. Ew, no. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll deal with it for y'all. And the spider. Ooh. Uh, never gonna color that picture. I hate spiders, I hate husks, and I hate yellow jackets. And I will scream like an eight-year-old if they come after me. They are, uh, and they sense fear. I know people are like, no, they don't. No, they do for me. Uh, they will chase me and seek me out. At least with spiders, they don't fly. And I've said that before, that really there's only like the little jumping spiders. And I think Anne from A Colorful Life commented that, oh, they're so cute. No, Anne, they're not. <laughs> I had them in Owensboro and they were like, uh, that was like my worst nightmare combined right there. Uh, but for the most part, at least they don't jump or fly. And... You'd think my cats could would be expert hunters for spiders and whatnot. Nope, nope. They want to play with them until they go under something. And then they'll sit there and plot revenge and the cat will get bored and walk away. So, not so good hunting-wise. Got your frogs. Your rhinos. Again, great variety here. Your mongoose. I don't know what the plural is. Mongooses? Mon <laughs> I don't know. Mongai? Uh... uh I saw, I think I talked about a picture with these in Midnight Forest from Creative Haven, and I was talking about Ricky Tikki Tavi, which was a cartoon when I was a kid that I absolutely loved. Not the new version, the like Chuck Jones version, the, uh, the older one. Your elephants, again. Uh, crocodiles, alligators, not sure what the difference is. They have little hearts, which is kind of cute, actually. Uh, and see, I don't mind the crocodiles or alligators. I just, that spider one. I had a coloring book. Uh, it was one of those I think I had picked up from the dollar store or something. And I was coloring a picture in it. You know, I got to go back and find that. I just realized that I left that picture uh, unfinished. And so now I'm like, oh no, I have to go back and find that picture. I totally forgot about it. But when I was coloring that picture, the page before it was one with a spider on it. 
And when I come across that page, I ripped it right out of that book. There is no way, no how I'm coloring that picture. And I did not want to have to look at it every time I opened that book. So, yeah, now I'm going to have a lot of people trying to send me spider coloring pages. And thanks, guys. I, I know that's coming. You got your shark. Your mice. Yeah, speaking of hunters. I will in... T over 10 years in this house, I have only ha seen two mice, and one of them kind of, I assume, died of a heart attack, because any mouse that comes into a house with 11 cats must want to commit suicide. But that sucker probably had a heart attack from the sheer number of uh, cats coming after it. And the other one, somebody, I don't know if they killed it or it was already dead, but they decided to tuck it under a rug for later. And that was not a fun experience finding that. I did what I like to call the dead mouse dance, which is kind of flailing around and screeching like an eight-year-old. I don't mind mice. It's just they're dead mice, right? I've seen a couple outside. I've had some of the uh, outdoor strays bring those to me as apparently a thank you for giving them some food. And no, I don't want that gift. But anyway, my newest addition, Annie, now, she is street smart. She... The rest of them just want to play with stuff, and she is a hunter. I'll have to talk a little more about that when we get to the other, when we get to the uh, example page. Koala, again, a little too simple for me. Ducks, this one's nicely balanced. Uh, probably could have used just a tad more, but I'm cool with it. Got your bat. Now, this one was nicely done. Not as much white space. Making me think of fruit bats, of course, and the whole fruit bat nation thing with, with Ann. I gotta totally color this up for that. Dolphins. Lobster. Again, a little too much white space. Penguins. You got even got your, your dogs in here. Uh, Basset hound, uh, I think. Oh, Lord, I don't I can't remember. Apparently, there's not enough coffee in the house today for me. This one's a little bit simplistic again. Seahorses. You could kind of do more gem work here if you wanted to. Your killer whale. I do like the different textures on the animals. As I've said, you have some where you can just color in straight or they have some texture to them. The piggies. This was the one I was going to print out and demonstrate because I really like this one. I do wish there was something else here other than the dots, but I get what they're trying to do. In these cases with the single images, the single animals, they want to, you know, you can look at them, make the animal stand out, and then the mandala part kind of fades in the background, but again, I still feel like there's too much white space here. That was the one I was going to print out. Then I came across this one. Now, I'm not a particular fan of roosters or chickens or now tigers that are given but one thing I like about this because of the variety of animals and the styles that they provide I get really inspired and this one just popped out right to me and I was like this is it this is the one I'm gonna work on and then we have horses gorillas Iguanas. Again, not a big fan of iguanas, but I really like this one. I would probably, again, not too much white space, but in this case, I would probably try to add my own. Even if it was just a couple lines to kind of balance it out, I think it would be helpful. Get your birdies. We're getting close to the end. Your chameleons. Again, a blending of different colors on these would look, would look cute. Your little pug. I like this one little textures and stuff. And this one's nicely balanced. There's not as much white space with this one. Your eagle. This one is very nice. Uh, great balance of line art, white space, and it's not overly complicated. So this one's just about perfect when it comes to like the single animal mandalas in this. You got your turtles. And you got your line. Again, same same complaint with the white space. This right here feels more like an afterthought. They did really well on this end. They did really well with the line. It's like they didn't really know what to do in the middle, so we got dots. Kind of looks like a clock, you know? Yeah. There's only a few extra dots. Sorry. I was counting them in my head, evidently. 
So that's pretty much it. Now, with every Jade Summer book you get, you get a code to access your digital edition. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to show you my code. Uh, but they do provide the page for that. And they show you how to actually access it. So that is always a part of these. I have never come across a Jade Summer book where you did not get a digital, free digital edition as well if you get the printed version. So my overall thoughts on this book. I might put a timestamp on this for people that didn't want to go through all that. This really grew on me. I do like a lot. Uh, I like the variety of animals. I like the variety of mandalas in terms of complexity. I, a lot of the art I love because I'm looking at it and I, I automatically think of what I can do with it. And that's my favorite kind of coloring page right there. When I can look at something and, and just boom, get an idea for it. And I did that with quite a few pages in this book already. And I love that. Now, some of the things that probably could be worked on, uh, some of the simple mandalas with the single animals are a little lax in my opinion they can stay simple but there's a lot way more white space than should be there now like in this case whoever colored however this was colored they added in their own little white dots to create texture which is great i mean those those types with the white with a lot of white space left uh like the goldfish and stuff this is a great opportunity for you to kind of get even more creative on your own and create your own textures which, if you're that kind of person, then these are perfect for you. And I, I like doing that myself, but many people I know aren't, don't feel confident enough to do that on their own. So I do feel like some of these were a little too simplistic, maybe a little more rushed in comparison to the others. But that's honestly my biggest complaint with this one. Again, when I looked at it at first, I wasn't a fan, but it's really grown on me. I like this one a lot. And um, so, if you're interested, you can head on over to jadesummer.com and look at that book as well as others. Like I said, they publish a lot of books on a pretty frequent basis. I wouldn't say weekly, but it's pretty close. I, uh, I love the Country Farm one and the anime, and oddly enough, I have not looked too closely at the Cute Cats one. I know, right? Like, what's wrong with me? Well, we've been so busy with Dover Month and everything else, I haven't had a chance. But this week I wanted to cover this one since it's a new release with a, you know, new release price. And then down the road, I mean, I'm going to roll back and review some of these as well. So uh, you can go here to get your link. You can go to Amazon and search for it. This is what that looks like. They also provide the thumbnails showing the art here as well. Again, really awesome. Wish more illustrators and artists and groups would do this. I love that. Because like I said, my biggest pet peeve when it comes to coloring books, especially on Amazon, because I can't seem to find reviews with images anywhere else or thumbnails of images. Amazon, seen, if I go buy a book on another site like Book Outlet, I always search for it on Amazon, not only to compare the price, but to actually see some of the line art because you can't find that on other sites and it, it's lacking on Amazon too. Most of the time you have to go to the reviews to get completed pages to get an idea of the line art. But in this case they do provide it in the thumbnails which is really nice and again another big thumbs up to them for doing that. I wish more would. And uh, yeah so that's what you can do. If you're more interested in Jade Summer, they do have a couple Facebook groups. Jade Summer Artwork is their group that you can become a member for. As you can see, I've already started a, uh, po a response to their new release post, kind of giving some of my feedback. I'll also be leaving a review. And then they have a Jade Summer page that you can like and follow and set up notifications. And they also provide new releases and information here as well. Anyway, I am going to pop over to my webcam and we're going to take our little rooster picture from this. And I've already started on it a little bit and we're going to have some fun with it. So see you in a second. All right. So after do, uh, recording on my computer, we have swapped over to my webcam. 
if you remember me talking about the rooster image in the Animal Mandala book uh, by Jade Summer, then I mentioned that this was the one I printed out that I kind of wanted to play around with. Again, the beauty of the digital editions is you can use whatever kind of paper you want. So I actually printed this out on watercolor paper because I have not played with watercolors of any kind in a few, in a few weeks. And you know, I've really missed it. I, I think watercolor is probably the thing I enjoy the most. So I thought I'd go back to it. I also thought I'd try out something I have bought uh, thanks to the back to school sales on Walmart's website. I did not know these existed, but what I've done so far actually looks really nice, especially when you consider that I'm using Crayola. I didn't even know they had watercolor pencils. And I saw these on Walmart site and I thought, okay, I gotta try these out. So just a little 24 pack that I have. I don't know if they make any bigger sizes. And again, they're not ones that just stand out. So I didn't even know they existed. So last night, just for fun, I got out, I printed it out. I went ahead and tested out some of the watercolor pencils and was pleasantly surprised at how, how good they are. Now granted, they still are a budget pencil and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we move along. But today, I would like to at least kind of work on the rooster a little bit catch you guys up to what's what in my world and uh just you know i'm not gonna sit here i can't finish this picture on on here it would take forever trust me but uh i used uh yellow orange and peach then this was just regular yellow and a salmon color for the other rays and then i kind of mixed all that in the middle as well so for the rooster itself, I'm actually going to stick with how a rooster looks, uh, though, the, of course, there are different varieties. And the one I found online just looks gorgeous. I had to actually pull, pull that up <laughs> so I knew what I was doing here. And we're just going to play with this stuff. It, it's not going to be perfect. And there's going to be things where I'm going to screw up, but we're going to roll with it. So I'm going to start here and just basically work my way around the rooster. I'm going to use, this is what the pencils look like. Again, with the shiny stamps. I don't get it. Like, why do you do this? Especially for people like me. We're blind. I can't see well. So it says Crayola watercolor. And it does have the name on the end. So that's really nice. I do like that a lot. So this is a red orange and then we're using an actual red and that's what I'm going to use for the little uh, whatever it is the thing that sticks up on his head I'm sure some of y'all are screaming at me what that is but my uh, brain is not is not on it so what I did here was I basically went ahead and colored in and then used you know both colors I'm using a two color blend and that worked really well here so I'm going to try to continue that throughout the rest of the picture and uh, you know initially when I looked at these pictures I was like you know this doesn't really t lend itself well to watercolor but this one I I was really drawn to for it so I'm going to use two color blend using those two reds that I just showed you and we're going to work on this part of the rooster but yeah, Crayola watercolor pencils, guys. I mean, I have others to try, and they certainly, I think I have some Derwents to try. I haven't played much with ink tints, which those aren't real, those aren't watercolor, they're Indian ink. But the, pretty much anything with a water brush that I can use a water brush with. Let's just call it that. And uh, I still got so many different things I've got to try. But for some reason, I kept the, this little pack of watercolor pencils out. And every week I've looked at them and thought, man, I really want to try these. Because I, I was just really curious. And uh, so I thought this would be perfect. I got a new pack of watercolor paper in yesterday. It's a good way to kind of test that. I've played around a little with it before. And I like this paper. I'll have to put a link at the bottom. So far, it has worked well for me. So, 
but yeah, no, I uh, kind of need the other color, Michelle. So I'm just putting the dark kind of where I would think it would be in terms of like if there was any kind of shadow and to provide a good mix of color, a good blend. So let me add that part in and just go around the edges. Now, I have not worked with watercolor pencils a lot. I had to actually look up a little tutorial for this one. Man, I really wish I could get this camera closer. All right, well, hang on. You guys may have to just endure this. Woo! Wasn't that fun? You got a basically a roller coaster ride for free. Yeah, well, it's better than it was. I don't know why it looks so washed out, but you get the idea. So I'm going to use the red orange around all the edges that I didn't put the actual red. But I have not had a lot of experience with watercolor pencils, so I had to bounce around YouTube for a little bit and just to get an idea. But for me, for any new thing I'm learning, whether it be coloring, art, work, what have you, the best way for me to learn is to just go with it. And the thing is, as I've learned with this so far, that it's not even necessarily watercolor pencils as a whole, but it's also learning how to work with the Crayola watercolor pencils. Because with each product, it, there's a different way you have to work with it, at least in my experience. And so not only do you have to get used to using that particular type of product, you also have to get used to using the particular name brand too like with prismacolors versus you know like polychromos and stuff they're both color pencils and you have to get used to using colored pencils but they're also very different in how they uh operate so you have to learn the nuances of each brand now i'm using a derwent water brush number two I have so many other water brushes here but i'm telling you guys so far the derwent ones i i absolutely love so I'm just going to start doing little circles and we'll start on the darkest and then just kind of blend out. But I tell you in terms of just just enough water being put out of them and the types of brushes I love these. There's a little three pack of them that, that are for sale on Amazon and uh I went ahead and bought another pack, even though I have I have some Arteza brushes, and then I've got some other ones that aren't really a common name, I don't think. Well, geez, you can't really see a difference on this one in terms of the colors, but that's all right. I know it's there. Now, as I said, it's all about learning not only to use, in this case, watercolor pencils, but to learn how to use Crayola watercolor pencils, because these have been surprisingly nice. I really enjoy them and will be using them again. Actually, I'd love to find more colors. I'll have to go look online. If not, I'm going to have to ask Crayola to make more colors. But, as with any other Crayola product or, I guess on the lower end of the spectrum of, of products, you're going to get some... You're not going to get as bold a color or as much pigment. See, I have to go back in and fill this in a little with just the colored pencil. And it's just small spaces, so I don't really have to use the brush again. The one downside, and you can kind of see it up here, is with Crayola products, lower end coloring products like that, they do not provide as much pigment, even when you're like pressing really, a lot of times you have to press down really hard because they're harder pencils anyway. Uh, to get some good bold color. In this case with the watercolors, uh, with the pigment when you're using the brushes, as you can see, it's to a point if you get it over wet, you're just going to be pushing the color around rather than blending it. I used a orange and a peach color here in the middle and you can't really see the peach color much. The lighter colors really wash out. I This was a salmon and you can see it, but it's still kind of streaky compared to the more vibrant colors like the yellow and the oranges. So that's that's a that's a thing for uh, for Crayolas and for the watercolors in this case. But you can learn to work around that. I uh, I've learned that I don't need to put as much water down. 
shorter like strokes and doing circles with a brush really helps and if it looks streaky maybe don't go back and try to fix it <laughs> with a water brush because you're just gonna make it worse at least that's what's happened with me so at, at that point i have to learn to leave it alone now if you were using derwent's or T tombos as watercolors or anything like that I'm just going to put a little red down here, but I'm going to put more of an orange over this feather part, I think. It'd be interesting to layer them and see how that works. I don't think they'll get muddy considering the colors I'm using, but let's, uh, let's try it, shall we? And this is the red orange I'm using. But with your higher price supplies, you're going to have more pigment, even just regular watercolor paints. And, uh, so when you go to blend and use your water brush, you're going to actually be able to blend more rather than just pushing the color around. Like, it kind of happens in this case, which I hate, but I played with it last night and actually learned how to work with it. And that makes me happy because I know a lot of us out there want to try some new things, but maybe not necessarily have the budget for Tombows or Derwent's or what have you. And in this case, maybe they want to try more watercolor type stuff or watercolor pencils. And I, in my opinion, this, these are a great option. But you just have to play with them and work with them. And do, this is actually a really good example. When I did a video a while back called The Five Things I Wish I Had Known When I Started Coloring. And one of the things, one of the five things was that the paper is just as important as what you're using. So in this case, I think the reason this is working at, as well as it is, is because it's watercolor paper. I'm giving it the best surface to work on. And in this case, I think that's why the Crayolas are functioning so well. Now, it would be really good to test these on other types of paper, and I plan to do that, but... I actually got my watercolor paper in yesterday, and I was super stoked, so I wanted to try it out. Now I'm going over it with yellow. That was an orange. Sorry, guys. Again, with a 24-pack, you're not going to get a huge variety of colors. So now I'm curious how they will blend together uh, with the Crayolas. But um, the watercolor paper I purchased, I, it was just... I, I had bought a small pack a couple months back. To try it out. I hadn't really heard anybody talk about it in particular. It had fairly good reviews and it was pretty decent price. And so I got a small pack and tried it out and I was really happy with it. Now, is it probably like artist grade watercolor paper? No, probably not. There, I'm sure there are better products out there. But in this case, I think it's it works great. If you're just starting out with watercolors or you want to play more with watercolors, I don't know. I've been really happy with it. When I was testing it a little bit uh, a while back and with this in particular, I really like it. So I will put the link on the bottom. I can't even think of the name of it. I went ahead and ordered, like I said, in terms of knowing using the paper to give you the best results i ordered some different marker paper to try it is actually a nina bright white sort of a super smooth paper i got i spread really good reviews on it regarding using it as marker paper and it would definitely be less expensive than the express it or the specific copic paper which i've used and it's and it's lovely but oh my goodness the price and I have so many free or purchased blank coloring pages to print out that I had to get me some paper. I also got regular cardstock. I do have paper to uh, just use uh, like for coloring that I believe Aaron at Simple Art for Adults suggested. I haven't really had a chance to try that out either. Now see, just putting the pencils, they blend together pretty darn well. For I mean, like I said, for Crayolas, right? I mean, when we're thinking of 
products that blend well together and whatnot. Now be sure to clean your brush off in between the different colors so you don't run the risk of uh, putting a different color here than you intended. Now in this case, since I put multiple colors over, I'm just gently stroking like this, mostly because I, I want to get the water in there and I do want stuff to blend, but because the Crayolas don't have as much pigment in them. I do want to be a little more careful on how I blend them. And I go from the dark to the light. You could go the other way. But for me, this seems to cause less problems than from light to dark in terms of uh, streakiness and pushing around the pigment. But I am going to clean off the brush a little when I get to this yellow because I don't want quite as much orange into this. This is all about blending it out. And then you can do that or you can do little circles depending on like with this little bit circles were okay but on the bigger pieces like these uh the rays from the sun i found that i have better luck with blending rather than streaking the color if i used actual just flicking motions like this so i'll circle a little bit on places like this just to get the color good and going but look at that guys Trail of watercolors. Look at that blend. Isn't that pretty? I am. This is like, these are like the biggest surprise to me in months of things I've tried. I have to go look up the price I had, I got them for too, because it is. I think these are fantastic. If you want to try watercolors, I would highly recommend getting watercolor paper to print stuff out on for sure. Because, again, you may not get these results on just regular paper. I'll have to test that out. But, again, I wanted to really try these out. And, um, oh my goodness, look at that blend. I mean, granted, it's not seamless. Actually, I probably could go back over it a little bit more and it would turn out even better. But, again, if you start, like, dragging it back and forth, that's where you start getting streaky and, like, pigment getting pushed around. It's better just to use slower flicking and circling motions. And that's what I was saying. You've got, this isn't necessarily just learning watercolor pencils. This is learning how to use Crayola watercolor pencils. Because this is probably, for me, I suspect this is different than if I was using Derwent's or something like that. You could probably be a little more little less careful with them and still get great results but if you're just starting out going a little slower like this works out really well too because it helps you get used to it guys I have missed using I know these are just watercolor pencils and I say watercolors but I mean really and truly see this part here is just a little weird looking so just go back over it I went back over them um, after they've dried, and because of the watercolor paper, I'm actually able to move it around a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, again, for Crayolas, that is awesome. All right, so we got that part. Now, we're going to move to the breast. Ha, ha, ha. And all the inner 12-year-olds are snickering, because I said breast. <laughs> well, maybe not, but... <laughs> Oh, come on. You did. You did. Admit it. And now I'm shaking the camera. Admit it. Uh, you probably won't. That's all right. So for this part, I'm going to use just the regular blue. And I'm also going to use the black watercolor pencil, which should be interesting. I don't think I've used that much. Now, from what I remember, oh, good Lord, guys, sorry. Uh, there we go. I don't know why I keep banging the desk today uh, so in this case what I've always learned about the about paints is that any sort of color type situation like this your reds and your yellows and stuff will actually have a lot less pigment than your darker colors like your blues and your blacks so you may have to use a little more red to get a more vibrant red so to speak but with darker colors like black and blue you don't necessarily have to put as much pigment down 
So when it came to these oranges and yellows, like I really put a lot of pigment down. I was pressing really hard on this pencil. And that is a downside to Crayola is because they are a harder pencil. It makes them great for Jade Summer books now. Create Space Paper and Crayolas just are beautiful together. And if you aren't happy with how well it blends on its own, you can always use a blender pencil or mineral spirits or something like that. But the harder the pencil, the better it is with Create Space Paper or any sort of toothy paper per se. Well, we're just going to go ahead and do blue and then I'll streak in some black. But, uh, yeah, so we're not, I'm not going to press down as much with the blues and blacks. Because I really don't want to lose, I want to see a blend. I don't necessarily want it all to look just black with very little blue. So we're going to, I'm going not super light with the blue. I'm probably about medium pressure. And then with the black, I'll go even lighter to start with. Because that's the thing, even with watercolors, as long as you're using watercolor paper or something that is not going to soak it up very quickly. You can blend it and then maybe go back and blend it some more if you're not happy. You can put a little more colored pencil over it and go at it again. There's, you know, it's not necessarily, ink tense is a little different. That is Indian ink and if it's on there and it dries, that is it. There is no going back and reactivating it. It's just not going to happen. So, you know, just... Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> I just keep hitting this desk today. I don't know what's gotten into me. But, alright. So there we go. And I'll just put a little bit more right there. And then we're going to add in some black. I don't know if I've used a black watercolor pencil before. I'm trying to think. Have I? I don't think I've done anything with watercolor pencils on camera before. The only things I've used are Tombows and I use Crayola markers. And that was kind of the same situation, guys, if you remember that last month with the uh, Heather Valentin. No, month before last. Oh my goodness. Uh, if you remember with the Heather Valentin color along, I actually, and it was also Crayola month of, at, over at Grace's, uh, I decided to use Crayola's markers, like the water-based markers, but I also wanted to um, use them as watercolors, which I was able to, but it was, even pre-treating it with gesso, I ran into some problems with the Create Space paper. I tested it, and it turned out really good, and then when I tried to replicate it, it just didn't turn out so good. So, yeah. I wonder if the stabilized feature is still going to be there. YouTube's getting rid of some of their features, and I'm, you know, I'm hoping, like, Stabilize is... Oh, my gosh, guys. No! Oh, hang on. <laughs> Let me adjust here, so maybe I can quit making this stupid thing shake. Which, if I use a Stabilized version on YouTube, that will probably help. Alright, let's see if that helps. No, not really. Boy, alright, well, that's alright. So, I'll put a little bit of this under here. But yeah, no, I don't think I've used watercolor pencils on camera before. I've used a little bit of ink tints. I've used Tombos as watercolors. And I've used Crayolas as watercolors. Which, what I was saying was, it's pretty much the same situation. Because, the problem I ran into with the Crayola markers was that... They didn't have as much pigment in them, so I had to use more of them on the plastic palette to get the colors I wanted. So, you were just going to see that with, their, I love using Crayola products, I love using like the Super Tip markers, I liked using them as watercolors. I'm just going back over to kind of push back some of that black color before I get started with the water brush. Uh, but yeah, this is a whole less is more, and I, th I think that was a do as I say, not as I do kind of situation, because I should have went a lot lighter with it. But that's alright. I go back over it. The blending seemed to work really well with the, uh, with the neck. I don't know. I don't know what you call that. I live in the country, but y'all, I ain't, <laughs> I'm not a farm girl. Never have been, never will be. My mom was, and my grandparents were, for sure, but, mm-mm, nope. 
I am not a, uh, if I had a rooster or a chicken and I was supposed to kill it and eat it, I probably would just go hungry. I'd name the thing and like start, you know, making it a pet. I just, I couldn't do it. All right, so I'm going to go back through with the water brush and get started. I'm going to go from blue to black this time just to make sure we don't cover up all the blue. So we'll try. Let's see what the pigment difference is here, too. I'm curious to see if I'm going to have as much problem with the blues as I did. See, you can see it right here. It's not as much pigment. I'm trying to push it over a little bead of the color, but it's not. It's not really happy about that but uh guys I mean I have a ton I have so many shh, me and prime day boy oh boy there's so many things I need to review and that I have to do reviews on and to try out and I, there's stuff I still don't have I, I still haven't tried yet look how much how dark that black color is yeah I should have used less of it that's all right I think I'll go back over it with a darker blue and then now see that's actually kind of a nicer blend uh, if I take it to the edges like that I probably should have went just a hair darker on the blues which I can go back and fix with the watercolor paper it is a lot more forgiving you can kind of if you're careful and you're taking your time with it I don't think that's pilling. I, I'm not sure what that is. But uh, if you're careful and you take your time with it, you can always go back and fix it. It's a lot better to go lighter than you think you need and then go back and fix it. And just keep adding to it because, you know, if you get too much color, most of the time you can't, it's not like you can take it away. You can add to it, but you may not necessarily be able to take it away. So. We're going to go a little bit darker with the blue on here. I figured we could go a little lighter, but that black is definitely really pigmented, so the blue's not so much. That's all right. But out of all those supplies and stuff, I still love using Crayola stuff. I actually went ahead and got another 100 pencil set, um, even though I have the random box that my brother gave me after he was done with uh now i'm just going to go back over the skin now that we have a little more blue but uh he gave me after high school and stuff and it was it was crayola markers that are probably like 15 years old they've been sitting upstairs until this year when i really started getting into coloring and those suckers still worked i don't know i think i came across one that had dried out but the rest of them they are sturdy i mean the colored pencils that's probably no big surprise but man the Crayola markers, it just shocked me how how they were not dried out after all this time. So I enjoy using them. And I went ahead and got the 100 pack because I wanted to be able to swatch them too. Because the other ones are kind of random, you know. They're just, it's that collection you get, like if you have kids, I uh, or you, you know, at any point had grandkids or anything like that. Everybody's probably got that little random box of Crayola stuff or Rose Art sitting around the house uh, Just used for like random art projects and stuff and so I like the fact that that's there You know, that's something most of us have already available to use and you know budgets and time and access accessibility to certain products that aren't you know like if you if you can't if you don't use Amazon or can't use Amazon for some reason, uh, poor Australia. <laughs> uh, if you can't for some reason and the local stores or online isn't really readily available for you, then you know, like I said again, it can be a little bit of a challenge to get something you can you really like coloring with. So definitely don't. Don't just dismiss the Crayolas just because they're Crayolas. You, they can be used and used well. You just have to work with them a little bit and understand what limitations they're going to have. Like some of the, a lot of the colors are just not going to be pigmented like a Tombow or a Derwent would be. But 
like I said, if you're aware of those limitations and you work around them, you can get some interesting results, like I'm seeing here. See, I was a little better. I went a little darker on that blue, and that made a huge difference. This is, it's also being, introducing a little more pigment like that. I'm more able to push it, push the color around and blend it without getting as streaky. I mean, it is a little bit, but not nearly as bad as it was. Now, look at that. Not quite as good as the oranges and stuff, but I'm still pretty happy with that, actually. And see, I'm sitting here and I'm noticing stuff, and I just said, I have figured out if I go back to try to fix stuff with a Crayola, I end up making a bigger mess, but yeah, it's all right. And I'm not, you know, this isn't perfect. You're seeing me bleed through on through some of the lines, and it's not super precise, but you know, that's okay, because I'm going to cover it up with more watercolor and this is just having fun. I have missed doing that kind, this kind of stuff. I love markers, I love colored pencil, I love just about everything I've used, but there's something about using this water brush, whatever it may be, whether it's Tombows or, color, or pencils or actual watercolor paint. If it involves using this water brush, I there's just something about it. I really enjoy it. It looks a little shiny, but I think once it dries, yeah, like so, a little streaky. I may even go back with the blue a little bit. Let me see if I can do that. Even while it's still wet, you can usually do that a little bit. This is a good way to avoid some of the streakiness, too. You can always go back, and you can either just color over it and leave it as is, or you could go back over it with a brush if you wanted to. I think in this case, I've played with this enough. I could always go back and fool around with it a little bit more. See, I'm going to put in some blue there. That worked out pretty well. Look at that. So again, look at the limitations of it. If you can get around them. Man, these watercolor pencils are a lot of fun to use. I'll put a link down um, where I found them on Walmart. Now, you guys know how much of an Amazon fan I am. And... Uh, even I have to admit that when it comes to Crayola products, Amazon's a little difficult on those. Those are way higher than they should be, in my opinion. I think I'm on, this is going to be red, so. I mean, when I went to look for the 100 pack of the Crayola Super Tips, Amazon was not selling those directly. They, you had to buy them through other sellers, and it was like 20 bucks or something. And I'm sitting there going, no way. That is way too expensive. So I popped over to Walmart. And this was actually before the after school stuff. Or after school. Back to school stuff. After school. Uh, kids wish, right? But uh, I went over there and they were like, I think 10 bucks maybe? If even that? And I was like, oh yeah, no, we're getting these. Because Walmart will offer, uh, I think it's $35 is the limit in shipping and they'll ship for free. Or you can order them and then just go to your local Walmart and pick them up. My local Walmart's about 40, 45 minutes away. So I would much rather just wait and ship them. Mine get to me pretty quickly too. It's not like, um, why am I grabbing the orange? It's not like uh, I'm having to wait weeks and weeks for it. But I will go to Walmart sometimes and do a price comparison between that and Amazon. And a lot of times, uh, there's a little dot there where stuff, pigment got lost. There you go. Um, I hope this thing hasn't been shaking the entire time. It probably has been. I hope, like I said, maybe YouTube will be able to stabilize it. Of course, at the rate I'm going, it'll be probably 9 o'clock before it actually processes the video. But that's fine. This is the red-orange, so we're just going to blend that in at the bottom like we did up here. It wasn't as obvious up there because it's a smaller space, but it might be a little more noticeable here. Like I said, I'm just pressing down pretty good on these. I think at this point, like I said, one of the limitations is just not as much pigment, so you are going to probably have to press down further to get more vibrant and less washed out color. And you'd think yellow would be one of the colors where it just 
it will wash out no matter how much you put down, but it's not. The only ones I've seen that with are the, uh, like the peach and the salmon, the super light colors like that are the ones that I didn't get super great results with. But the yellow is actually very vibrant. It's really pretty. I was pleasantly surprised by that. In some ways, I feel like it works better than the reds. That The oranges and the yellows were, were just, like I said, surprisingly, surprisingly uh, good with the watercolors and the water brush. Boy, I'm taking forever on this stuff. But, yeah, I have a ton of stuff to review. And like I said, when I found these on Walmart... Oh my gosh, I am not going back over this. So we're going to, like I said, I will leave Amazon to stabilize this. And if it's still shaky, then so be it. And I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what the deal is today. Normally, it really, you don't see a huge color nuance on the camera, but you can just barely see it right there. It's not a huge difference. I guess I could have just used the big, the deep red and been all right. But uh, a lot of times Walmart will pretty much have the same price as Amazon. So because I'm a Prime member on Amazon and they usually can get stuff to me a lot, a little bit quicker, it usually makes more sense for me to buy stuff on Amazon. But in some cases, like Crayola's, Walmart's hands down got the better deal on it. And like I said, particularly when I was looking when they were doing their back to school stuff. And it may still be happening because I know some some kids have not went back yet. Uh, the ones in my county went started back last Monday. And you did not, speaking of Walmart, you did not want to be in a Walmart last weekend. Last Friday when I got my, went checked out the dollar store and all these and got all that awesome stuff I showed in that video, I was planning to go to Walmart too and I saw how busy Dollar General was and with that I said, uh-uh, no way, no how. Ain't gonna happen, because I was not in the mood to deal with people like that. I I do have social anxiety, but in that case, I just hate crowds. I always have. I can handle it for a little while, but if I'm in there longer, if I have to get a cart to get something, and it's that busy, and I'm having to go try to go through the aisles, I will get irritated, and I am no fun to be around. Those are the times I feel really bad for my husband because he doesn't like it either, but I don't think it affects... He doesn't get as mad as I do about it. And then I just get irritable. I'm like a toddler. It needs a nap. It's it's pretty bad. But anyway, after I saw what happened at Dollar General, I was like, oh no, we're not going to Walmart. But yeah, no, their site had a great... had great uh, for sale or stuff on sale because of back to school, so... Now, one good thing I'll say about the watercolor, see, I'm going back over this, and it, I'll let it dry. It's getting a little streaky. I shouldn't have went back over it, <laughs> but I wanted to show, because I can go back over it with colored pencil, and the good thing about the watercolor paper is that it's not going to pill on you. I have not been able to make it pill on me yet. It's not going to get damaged. You can always go back over stuff. It's very forgiving. So you heat... If you have to pick something to invest in, invest in the paper. And then a lot of times, if you have the patience for it, your whatever product you're using, it isn't going to matter. Mm, see? And then you do like me and you see stuff and you want to go back and fix it. Now the... Alright, what is the... What are those feathers going to look like? I think... Well, hang on. Let me move my camera thing here. Ah, uh, there we go. So we're going in some yellows and oranges here. Maybe just a hint of red. So we'll do the red-orange. And where am I going to stop this? Eh, it might just make these first few like this. I found a very colorful one on Google. I don't know what version it is. I don't know what it's called. Unfortunately, I am not full of facts today. I am... I'm full of sleepy is what I am. I've mentioned before about my insomnia issues and ever since right before Felix passed away 
I thought it was bad starting in January because I'd get to, uh, I was getting to the point I was only sleeping about four or five hours a night, and I used to be able to nap and catch up with it, and I can't do that anymore. For some reason, I'll try to sleep, and half an hour later, if it's during the day, my body will go, nope, no more, not having it. And uh, it'll just stop. And I used to be able to catch up a little bit with a nap. As inconvenient as it was, I could do that. But now it's like, oh, nope, can't do it. And I thought it was bad when that started at the beginning of January. But every time I open my mouth and say, this is the worst it's ever been, my body, my body just wants to double down on that one. And uh, so about the time Felix passed away, I was averaging two or three hours a night. And for about two or three weeks after that, that was that was what I was averaging. And I was I was not in a good way. I mean, I'm still not feeling all that great. But in the midst of all that, there's, you know, I mean, I've talked a lot about the different things I've had to go through this past month. And trying to grieve with him without just making that non-stop the only thing in my brain trying to help my parents move and trying to figure out what the heck is going on with my job it's just it's yeah my sleep did not my body just did not want to sleep with it and then I started having all those stomach issues a couple weeks ago and uh one of the things I stopped was uh drinking soda I love cherry coke zero Love it. Only diet drink I can drink. I cannot drink Diet Coke. I guess it's a different sweetener they use. It's just I can't do it. And uh, so I stopped drinking Coke because I thought maybe it's the sucre, the I think Splenda like sweetener for that. And I can do Splenda. I just can't do like aspartame or sweet and low or whatever it's called. Uh, I can't do that very well. It just different taste. What in the heck is my husband doing in there? He sounds like he's beating something. Jeez. I mean, I know the cats have been kind of crazy the last few days, but... Or he's, like, putting in a new wall or something. <laughs> okay? Don't know what's going on there. But, uh... Oh, he might... You know, I'll hear it in a minute if it's what I think it is. So, yeah, I'm just kind of... Trying to blend these a little bit more. That orange is a little too, uh, that's too much of a line for me. So I'm just trying to blend it out. In the picture I'm looking at, it's all kind of a mix of oranges and yellows anyway. So this is, this is pretty accurate. But, uh, when I start, what the heck? I don't think you guys can hear that, but I can. And the, uh, if he's in the kitchen, like it is right on the bedroom that I'm in, that I'm using as my, like, studio, is right next, it shares a wall with the kitchen, so everything in here sounds a lot louder than it really is. Alright, I think I'm okay with that for the moment. Again, the beauty of this is I can always go back. So let's go ahead and wrap up with these feathers on the end. I might even get his feet and his beak in a little, and then I can continue to work on this off camera. Like I said, I'll probably go back. I This, I'm thrilled with. The top part here, nah, don't even want to touch it. This is okay. This I need to work a little bit more on in this one as well. So, let's see. What am I going to use for this one? I think it's more of an aqua. Uh, let's go with a... Hmm. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do aqua green, which is like the lightest green that I'm seeing. And we're just going to do the very tips of these feathers in them. They pretty much range from like an aqua color to blue-green to a deep blue to black. So <clears throat> I will try to replicate that as best as I can. Okay. It wouldn't really be right there, but it doesn't hurt to add just a little bit of the color just if you're really trying to achieve a blend. So... But, uh, I tried cutting out caffeine because I thought maybe too much caffeine was, you know, was aggravating my stomach. And that didn't fix it. But what I noticed, now, 
I can't, I couldn't go without my coffee forever. That just wasn't going to happen. I was desperate enough to try going a week without it and just trying tea if I was that desperate, but it just, mm -mm. it was a good trial, I guess. But what I realized is I had started sleeping a little better. And I thought, huh, turns out I think I was drinking too much coffee, not coffee, too much caffeine in the afternoon. And when, I, when I've read up on it, it's always, you know, they always say like around four or five o'clock, maybe, maybe knock it off. And I've been doing that before, but I think for me, it's even earlier. It's pretty much two or three p.m. If I'm drinking any caffeine, I need to wrap it up by then. And uh, it was a lot easier for me to go to sleep at night and get tired and sleepy. And I was like, huh. So I brought coffee back in. I did not bring in Coke Zero. Instead, I found there's a fairly new product out there called Cherry Sprite Zero. And my parents had some. And I tried it last week when I went to hang out with my mom. It was really good. I mean, it might not be that new, but I've never seen it. And so when I went to my local grocery store this week, I was looking for it. And it was there. Now, downside of my local grocery store is that being a small town it's that kind of name brand stuff's gonna be a little more expensive so i have to deal you know take that into account but i really like them and it helps a lot in in terms of if i want like a soda or something to drink i have that option without it having caffeine in it and i can drink it in the evenings if i want and everything's cool uh so I'm starting to get that. But ever since I started doing that, guys, it has been so much better. So much better. And, um, well, I really hope that, yeah, I'm going to say, guys, if the stabilize feature isn't working and this thing's all over the place, I'm probably not going to post it. So you won't even see that part anyway. But that's okay. We're going to cross our fingers and hope. It's been able to save my butt before, and I'll try to figure out why it's shaking so much for my next video. Uh, I mean, I get up in the mornings, I'll have one, two cups of coffee, and then I might, if, if I'm drinking any sort of caffeine, it is going to be tea. Even into the evenings, I can drink tea and be okay. It's not, because tea isn't at least the types of tea I'm drinking, like green tea and black tea, aren't quite as, a. Uh, they don't have quite as much caffeine in them. So I can drink that if I really need to or really want to, and I'm okay. But since I've been doing that and trying not to take any sort of nap during the day, I will start getting really sleepy at five or six in the evening. And I can, if I go into the bedroom and I do my little bedtime routine and I don't wind up sitting on the couch half the night, I can go to sleep and guys I've been sleeping really well these past few days at the beginning of the week I was struggling really bad and I was kind of breaking down Wednesday I just pretty much had to take a like mental health day I was exhausted there was no way I was gonna get any work done and I just needed a day to sleep and catch up which is what I did and I know you can't entirely catch up on sleep you know if you if it's gone it's gone but I knew it, the more I could sleep, and like that day, because I'd only been sleeping two or three hours a night again for two or three days, that day I slept and slept, slept some more during the day. I still went to bed at a regular time that night and slept. So I guess my body really needed it. And I did this last Saturday too. And guys, I've been able to go to sleep. I went to sleep around one last night, but that was only because I stayed up late uh, coloring this and I got, got carried away. See, if I get out of my routine, if I don't go in there with my Kindle and read with the red, uh, the, like, nighttime shading on the Kindle, and I don't go through my little routine, then it's harder for me to go to sleep. So, I have to stop coloring, I have to go in there to read, and if I get distracted like that, or I stay on my computer too late, then it's just, like, it, I have hard go of it. And that's pretty much what happened. I figured out the two nights earlier this week, I had actually had a Coke both days around 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening. And I struggled all night. So, stopped that. 
in the last few days. I slept in until 10 o'clock today, guys. I went to sleep at 1. I slept till 10 a.m. I don't... <laughs> that sounds like... I know most of y'all are like, okay. You don't understand. I can't... I haven't been able to sleep late in forever. It's been like 6, 7, 8 a.m. or... And that's it. Like... <laughs> And the fact that I've been able to do that is just amazing. I can't even begin to tell y'all. So basically I'm going from a aqua green to a blue green here in the darker to blue to black. So creating hopefully what will be a really pretty gradient here. But it's gonna, like I said, this is because of these types of watercolors, I, it's something I'm going to really have to play with probably a little bit to get to the way I like it. But, again, this is really forgiving in terms of that. The only thing I seem to have had too much of was the black watercolor. That seems to be one of those. A little is, is fine, and I might have went too dark on these, but that's alright. I'm just going back over some of these to blend them a little better. I found I had a lot better results on the rays when I did that, so I figured that would work well on this too. But, um, I did. I slept till 10 a.m. this morning. I have no idea why. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuss about it. I'm not gonna try to question it. I'm just gonna roll with it. This weekend will probably end up being a very relaxing weekend because... We've been helping with moving and work issues and stuff around the house that's had to be taken care of. In the past, just like I said, the past month's been, been very, very stressful. And it was for my parents, too. They finally got their house, their old house listed and on the market last Friday. So it's been about a week. And there's been a lot of interest in it. That's the thing, my, my parents live there 20 years and my dad never lets grass grow under his feet. He is all about, hmm, smudged a little right there. You see that? That's interesting. So, and it's not on my hand, it just literally smudged. But I can go back over that with the orange though and it ain't gonna matter. I ain't gonna deal with that right now. But, we're gonna try going from light to dark this time. Make sure, yeah. See, I still had yellow and orange on that. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Now, the only gripe I have with the Derwent water brushes, and I've mentioned this before, is every so often they will decide they're not going to put out any more water, and you kind of have to squeeze them, and I don't know if it just, the around the brush it just gets stopped up or what but you kind of have to squeeze them a little bit over a paper towel or something to get them get them back to where uh to normal and you can always tell when that happens because if you're using water brushes a lot like you can tell when the thing goes dry it's really easy to tell see i kind of overdid it with the black so there you go lesson for today the black watercolor pencil really does go a long way so you only need a little. That's alright. We're still getting a pretty good blend. But if I only got it listed, and like I said, my dad doesn't let grass grow. It was three acres. It was out in the country, like even further out than I am. It was actually part of the land that my grandparents had. And when I was graduating high school, they bought a piece of the land from my grandfather, my grandparents, and uh, put a house there. And, uh, I mean, over the years, Dad's put a new tin roof on the place. Uh, they got an above-ground pool. He decided to do a deck with it. The deck connects. They have a screen deck on the back. All that has been built and connects with the pool. The pool has a deck. And he, he built his own workshop. Uh, and my dad's like me. He's meticulous. One of the things I really had to get over when it comes to coloring and art is it's not going to be perfect and he's stop worrying over it and trying to make it perfect i get that from him because he's the same way if he's going to do it he's going to do it right and 
in terms of construction like decks and workshops and stuff that is a really good mentality to have because my dad would research and research and measure measure again you know measure twice cut once that was kind of his thing and uh so yeah i mean there's he, they've done so many enhancements to the place and in all honesty, I kind of was like, man, I, I kind of want that house. But we had bought our house, as a, or I had bought the house as a foreclosure years ago. And uh, we'd done some work to it. I've done some work. My husband's done some work over the years. Uh, and at first, I didn't like the house, but it's really kind of grown on me. And uh, I'm having to go and just run it over a towel each time I do that. So I'm not taking a lot of the black color pencil with me when I'm starting on the light ends. Hmm. Actually, I think my husband's making dinner early. But I don't know what in the world would have been pounding like that. Oh, if it, if it wasn't entirely defrosted, he might have had to muck around with it. We're making tacos. This is a lazy kind of weekend, and so thus, we're going to be kind of lazy with dinner. Dinners have been kind of lazy this past month anyway. I just have not felt like cooking or anything, so we've been having to kind of rough it. Some, fortunately, my husband does, he, he's really great about picking up half of the, the house stuff, of cooking, anything like that, shoot. He does so much for me at times when I'm in pain or I'm having, you know, I'm not sleeping and I'm having a bad day. He does more in his share a lot of times and I, I hate that. I don't, I don't like that, but I've had to learn to be okay with that. And then just when I have better days, do a little extra on those days to try to balance it out. But anyway, he said he, he would cook dinner tonight, so... And, you know, tacos aren't necessarily, at least for us, they're not necessarily something that's difficult. You know, hamburger meat and taco seasoning and taco shells, sauce, whatnot, and there you go. So, easy. We have a really good local Mexican restaurant. Like I said, for a small town, we have a really good variety of unique places and restaurants and it's 3,200 people in the actual city limits, which we have quite a few people that live in the surrounding areas. And um, we have a really good Mexican restaurant. We have, uh, we have a really good barbecue place. My friend Sylvester, who's from Chicago, he uh, built his own little food truck to use up here for a couple of years. And you're thinking, small town and a food truck? I bet that... No, he had great business. That was like the smartest thing he could have done because... You know, in a small town like this, the utility prices are high, um, and startup costs to rent a building and open a business are a little difficult, and a lot of people who have tried have not been able to stay very, stay very long because they just haven't had much success. But, I've always said, if you do, if you can find a way around that and build your clientele first, like working from home, you know, doing a home-based business or something, build up your clientele first then rent and open a space that's how that's how you can succeed it's still going to take you three to five years in this in this type of town and that's i don't think that's unusual to my my city but uh it's still gonna take you a while but you're gonna struggle a lot less than you would have if you just tried to start from the get-go out of uh like a rented spot so sorry guys i'm just trying to smooth some of this out. I don't, I don't want to just have set lines where you can see the color. Besides, this one here wouldn't be as bright because it's kind of behind the other ones anyway. So, this is really pretty, guys. I am just so happy with this one. I think I'm going to end up finishing this today. Like I said, I don't use, I've got to start using this stuff more because I love, I love the ease of markers. And I love the blends I can get from colored pencils. And there are a lot of things I tried in that Country Charm picture last month, like the Distress Ink and stuff that I really liked and I want to do more with. 
But when it comes to using this water brush with something, this puts me at peace more than I think anything else. And I don't know, maybe it's just the motion of, you know, slowly working at this. I think it's that and just seeing, I don't know, I, I like seeing the results better this way than I would if I was just going, going, going with a colored pencil set over this. I don't know. This brings me this brings me more joy in the long run. And I don't know why I haven't been doing it. I really don't. I, th I think I convinced myself that it's a lot harder to do this kind of stuff. Um, it's a lot more effort than just pulling out some markers. And not really. I mean, I have these pencils and I have this water brush. That's all I need. I mean, if it's watercolor paper, I'm just going to play around with this for a few more minutes. Actually, we need to do the feet and the beak and call it, because good lord, this is getting long. This is going to be tacked onto that review that I just did, too, so. I'm glad I'm doing that, though. I, that's one of those things that every time I see something, I'm like, oh, shoot, I need to do a review of this, and then it just gets pushed to the side, and I don't want to do that anymore. I talk a lot about supporting artists and supporting coloring books and others in the coloring community too and I need to start making a better effort to do that. So gotta gotta walk the walk, walk the talk, whatever. Okay, so we're gonna do the feet and then we're gonna call it. So with the feet, Lord, I don't know. I don't know what chicken feet are supposed to look like, but in that spot that looks white next to the neck part that's just shiny now the you know crayolas are wax based so they're gonna be a little shiny i'm going to use the peach i think and we're gonna mix in some gray and some white and i'll do that for both this and the beak so i think that'll be good enough look if somebody's going to criticize the color usage for for chicken feet or rooster feet in this case then Man, you need, you need, you need to find a hobby. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know what this totally makes me think of? I know I'm completely off subject. I've been doing that now for the last like 10, 15 minutes. I was doing so well though, guys. You know, this totally reminds me of, have any of y'all seen uh, Rockadoodle? It was an animated movie. I don't, it, I don't think it's Disney. I'll have to look that up. No, I don't think it's Disney. Anyway. Rockadoodle is about, like, apparently this rooster that uh, some evil owl steals his, steals his crow or something. I don't know. I don't remember. And there's a lot of farm animals and songs and stuff. And uh, I don't know. I really I just remember it. I've watched it multiple times. It's actually quite cute. Um, but, yeah, no, if you've never heard of that, and I would say if you have kids, but heck, even if you don't have kids, I watch so many Disney movies and stuff, and I just don't care. I have no problem telling people that. And they're like, oh, what do your kids like? No, no, I like watching them. Because, you know, hey, we can like stuff too, right? It's like coloring. You tell people you color as an adult, and, you know, sometimes you get some really weird looks. I'm just going to color in just a little bit of gray. I suspect this will be like the black and I need to just be a little careful with it and not do too much. But, uh, I don't know really. I'm just, if it looks close enough, I think I'm just going to say this is it because I don't really know what I'm doing on these. Uh, but, uh, it's kind of like coloring too. You tell people you color and they're like, oh, you know, and <laughs> who cares, right? I've said multiple times, and I've said in the live streams, you know, a lot of us, me included, for years have always worried about what others think. I've always wanted, you know, uh, validation from people, even though I've tried really hard not to care. It's still there, buried down, deep. Yeah, you don't see the white much on here, but it is kind of lightening the other up. Again, I haven't used a white watercolor pencil before either, so. I mean, it's, it's pretty uh, transparent, so it's not like it's majorly noticeable. But, uh. But, yeah. No. I, I tried to convince myself I didn't care, but I did. 
I was really insecure. Especially, like I've talked before about telling people how many cats I have and stuff. It's always been difficult for me. But I just hit a point where I was like, look, I ain't hurt nobody. And I love my life. So if you have a problem with it, I really don't care. <laughs> you go live your life and I'll be happy for you regardless of... You know what makes you happy or not people think 11 cats are a lot well i think 11 kids are a lot but if 11 kids is what brings you joy and you they're all well taken care of and happy and you love big families and you want to create that with your family i say that's awesome you're doing what what you think's best and you know you're happier for it so doesn't matter if I if I personally wouldn't do that I still am happy if that's what makes you happy I have so many friends that have kids and I love their kids to death and I would do anything for them I would you know I throw myself in front of a vehicle for them I mean that's that's that but I don't want to bring them home with me <laughs> I'm good on that you know <laughs> but uh anyway I mean I still have a bunch most of my friends have kids and I mean that's not unusual for my age but most of my friends have kids I mean I have some friends that are that are don't have kids either by choice or can't for some reason or another and I'm cool with either way you know it's just like I said you ain't hurting nobody you're happy then piss on everybody else I'm sorry that sounds awful mean but it's the truth what do you think guys I am really happy with these Crayola watercolor pencils. I can't imagine. I never would have thought these would have turned out well. But I did see the reviews on them. And that's what intrigued me. Because the reviews on them were really good. Even on Walmart's site. And while, you know, people don't leave reviews on Amazon. It's even worse on other sites. So when I saw positive reviews, a number of them, on Walmart, that really caught my attention. I want to see if they have more than 24. It does say made with reforested wood, which is very cool. If you are big into the environment, it says for every tree used, a new one is planted. They've been made from reforested wood since 1987. So for every tree used for this, they plant a new one, which is really awesome. You don't see that very often. Using recycled plastic in our markers, and they do solar panels to actually produce their products. That's pretty awesome, guys. I've never seen that. These are made in Brazil, too. But that makes sense, right? But good on them. Good on Crayola. But you ain't gotta have... You gotta have Derwent watercolor pencils. You ain't gotta have ink tents. You don't have to have... And, and don't get me wrong, I love, I love my ink tents and Tombows and all that, but... If your budget just doesn't allow for them, but you really want to try watercolors, this is a fantastic option. And in fact, I will be using these a lot. I can already see it. Probably mostly on, on watercolor paper, but I also want to test them on other paper too, just to see how they do. Anyway, guys, I think this was a pretty good kind of demonstration of the page. There's something on my page. There it goes. Actually, while I'm talking, I'm going to see if I can fix that a little bit of a smear. There was just a little bit of blue and green kind of colored pencil dust that got on there. Now, one thing I will say, I have tried erasing these. They erase okay, but I guess as watercolor pencils, you're, gonna, you're not going to have as easy a time anyway, which color pencils are always difficult. The harder la of the layer you put down, the harder it is to erase them. So, well, that actually worked pretty well. I think for watercolor paper, it's even it's even worse. So, and watercolor pencils, but that did a pretty good job. It did better than I thought it would, actually. I'm gonna play with this while I'm talking. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this. I'm telling y'all, I'm totally gonna finish this one today. I have my cat one, and I love the cat picture I'm working on with my Copics. But this is so much fun. I've got to start using more water-based stuff like this. I just it brings me joy. And I know there are a lot of people out there that don't like doing this, and this may not be their thing, but 
It's like I commented on somebody's video last night. I said, you know, it's what I love about YouTube and the coloring community because everybody, once they find that thing that makes them happy, they I love watching people do what makes them happy. It may be something that I'm never really going to use that much, but I love watching them do it because I see how happy it makes them, and you can see that through their pages and their finished their finished stuff. I mean, you can just tell. And so I got to start doing that myself here. I love markers, and I've been using them mostly for a while, but man, oh man. I've got to start using some watercolor pencils and, and Tombows and everything else. Yeah, I've talked myself to the point where my throat is dried out. So I'll finish this up. I will post it on the groups, Instagram, whatnot. Might even show it at the beginning of my next video uh, if I don't finish it today. I may just wait and tack it on at the end. So thanks for sticking around, guys. Hopefully this gave you a pretty good idea of this Jade Summer book. The other reviews I do like this won't be quite as long since we're just kind of starting out and I'm trying to figure out the routine on it. But I have long videos. We all know this. So uh, if you haven't, consider subscribing. Be sure to like the post. Comment if you like. I do have another giveaway, by the way. I know some of you have already left. I hope not. Tomorrow night, midnight, central time, Sunday night, I am giving away... A 72 set of Arteza Expert Pencils, and whoop, here I am jiggling the camera even more. Two Creative Haven books, Entangled Dragonflies and Art Nouveau Animal Designs. 12 o'clock tomorrow night is the deadline. If you are interested in entering the giveaway for those, go back and watch my video from this past Monday. Just go back and look at my videos and subscribe and comment with something like, I'd like to enter the giveaway. I'll give you a number just so we can avoid confusion. And then Monday, I will do another random number from randomnumber.org. And now I can show it better than just trying to put my phone on the computer screen. So this will be, work out a whole lot better. Uh, Debs, or Deb, Debbie in won the first giveaway. And I sent her stuff off yesterday or the day before. And hopefully she got it today. I think today was the anticipated delivery date. So I hope she enjoys those. And whoever gets this, I think you'll enjoy it too. I do have some other books I am considering giving away. I don't know if any of them are Creative Haven. So I may wait a week or two before we get to those. But anyway, guys, I will post this. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Hi guys, I just wanted to check back in real quick here at the end of the video. I had planned to finish this and then take this little clip and a few minutes to show you the finished product. Unfortunately, time has gotten away from me today. It is already 15 till 8 p.m. my time and at the rate it will take to f get this loaded, well excuse me, combined, loaded, and then stabilize it may very well be Sunday so I thought I would go ahead and get this going what I'll do is I'm still working on this having a blast I already know pretty much what I'm gonna do with the rest of it so once I get it done I will replace the thumbnail in this video with the finished one so you can see what it looks like when it's all done thanks you guys for sticking around today and I'll talk to you soon bye for now